An emotional day in a Kentucky courtroom. I heard this bad as I did the day it happened. A mother faces her son's killer, and she tells us why his death saved four other lives. He lost his leg in a hit and run outside a Lexington bar. Today we are seeing video of the crash for the first time. Coming up, we'll tell you about a wheelchair-bound 16-year-old from Estill County who is trying day by day to walk again. Tracking, alerting, protecting. This is WKYT News at 6. Good evening. He told the court he wished he had not survived the crash. Today, a Breathitt County man found out how long he'll spend in prison for killing four of his friends. Sean Harden admitted he caused the crash in 2014. He was driving a pickup that flipped. Four people riding in the bed of the truck died. As WKYT's Hillary Thornton tells us in our top story at 6, the mother of one of the victims says 13 years isn't enough. 19-year-old Sean Harden admits to being under the influence when he crashed a pickup, killing who he says were his four best friends. Pearl Armstrong, Adam Fugit, Joshua Thorpe, and Lee Campbell. Now, while he did not speak at his sentencing, he did write a letter that his attorney read out loud. Sometimes wish I hadn't survived, not because it would be the easy way out. It's because everything and everyone reminds me of my friends. I will forever be haunted by what happened. His attorney then asked the judge for probation, a request that did not sit well with Joshua Thorpe's mother. My son doesn't give me probation. My son never give him help. Giving an emotional plea to the judge to keep Harden in jail. There's not an ounce of me that thinks that that boy would get out of jail and do any better. And I got two more kids. What if he gets one of them head on drunk? The judge then denied probation, giving the recommended 13-year sentence. That followed a deal taken last month, reducing Hardin's charges from murder and first-degree assault down to manslaughter and fourth-degree assault. 13 years is nothing, <laughs> but at least it's something. While the court process is over for now, family says there is no ending to the grief they feel. There's no real relief. Uh, I heard this bad. I so did the day it happened. After today's sentencing, Collie says they will continue to remember and focus on what her son was able to give through this tragedy. Josh was an organ donor and he saved four lives. So, no matter how much meanness Mr. Harden can get into and, and cause, Josh kind of canceled it out in the bigger scheme of things, I think. In Breathitt County, Hillary Thornton, WKYT. Harden will be eligible for parole after serving 20% of his sentence, which is about two and a half years. He already has about 10 months of credit for time served. We have just learned about charges filed in a crash that killed a 13 year old boy in Knox County. Jathan Patterson died in February after police say he took his mother's car out on a joyride and crashed. Today, a grand jury indicted Jonathan Patterson with manslaughter. Jathan's mother told us that Jonathan is her ex husband and Jathan's father. The indictment says Patterson encouraged his son to drive the car while under the influence. Last night, a jury convicted a former Lexington firefighter for a hit and run crash that left a National Guard soldier seriously injured. Jarrett McCargo was found guilty of assault and DUI. Today, we obtained evidence used during that trial, including surveillance video of the crash last year at the Beer Trap in Chevy Chase. Our Garrett Weimers at the courthouse with more. Former firefighter Jared McCargo was convicted of six counts, including assault and DUI. Now we're getting our first look at surveillance video played in court that shows just what exactly happened on that night in September one year ago. The video may be blurry, but you can see the SUV as the driver tries to parallel park, then tries again, instead hitting Noel Espino and crashing through the building. Another angle from a camera further inside the bar shows people running to help as the car drives away. Pictures entered into evidence show damage to the car McCargo was driving that night. Noel Espino also took the stand to testify about what happened that night at the beer trap when he stepped outside to take a call from his wife. I stepped outside and uh, just got the phone and started talking to her. And from then, from then on, I was just clicked. It was like a, a light switch just turned off and 
I don't remember a thing. The jury recommended a 10-year sentence for McCargo. His final sentencing hearing is scheduled for November. In Lexington, Garrett Weimer, WKYT. Investigators said McCargo had a blood alcohol level of .122 that night. New information today about a body found during the search for a missing man in Pulaski County. The coroner says there is still no cause of death, but the medical examiner did determine the man had been shot. Investigators have not confirmed yet if the body belongs to Edward Van Wormer. He was reported missing last week. The body was found on his property along Jones Knob Road just outside of Somerset. Van Wormer's son was arrested in North Carolina yesterday in connection to the body being found. The sheriff's department says Van Wormer and his girlfriend are both suspects in his father's disappearance. Police say that plenty of tips have come in, but still no leads yet in the hit and run death of a Berea man. Someone hit and killed 71 year old Billy Croucher as he walked along Prospect Street in Berea last Friday night. Police issued a $1,000 reward in the case yesterday. Since then, officers say they have followed up on several leads, but nothing has turned up. Police are looking for a red pickup truck with front end damage. A frightening situation this afternoon at a Lexington grocery store after shoplifting turned violent. Police say that two workers at the Tate Creek Kroger tried to stop a man from stealing a cart full of groceries when the man punched one of them in the face. Police say the shoplifter then pulled out a box cutter. The workers backed away and the suspect took off. He was last seen getting into an older model gold Camry. Embattled Rowan County Clerk Kim Davis says she is switching to the Republican Party because she feels abandoned by Democrats. Davis made the announcement while in Washington, D.C. to receive an award from the Family Research Council. She spoke to CBS News today about why she continues to stand firm in her stance against same-sex marriage. WKYT Jennifer Palumbo is at the live desk with what Davis had to say. Jennifer? After spending five days in jail, Davis has been back at work at the Rowan County Courthouse. She still refuses to issue same-sex marriage licenses, but she hasn't stopped her deputies from doing it. CBS News correspondent Jerika Duncan sat down with Kim Davis in Washington. She asked Davis about her four marriages and whether she ever should have been denied a license. Davis said no because she never wanted to marry a woman. She was also asked if she had a problem with same-sex relationships. What people do in the privacy of their own home is not my business. So it's not why my not concern. Sign those licenses? Because that makes me a party to it. And if I'm a party to it, then I'm a partaker in that sin. And I don't want to be a partaker in that sin. When asked why she didn't just quit her job, Davis said it would be easy to step down, but she won't because she would lose her voice and be judged by God. You can see more from the Kim Davis interview on the CBS Evening News coming up at 6.30. At the live desk, Jennifer Palumbo, WKYT. Jennifer, thank you. Davis will receive the Cost of Discipleship Award tonight at the Values Voters Summit in Washington. Organizers say it recognizes people targeted for their religious beliefs. It is going to be a soggy night for Friday night football. The rain has arrived in most areas, so will it stick around for the rest of the weekend? Chief Meteorologist Chris Bailey has been telling us it was coming, and it has. Yeah, it's going to be with us all evening long, as you mentioned. It's just a wet evening and night across the bluegrass day. Then things get a little better as we go into our Saturday and Sunday. Here's the view outside right now. Hamburg Pavilion in the distance. A wet Winchester Road out in front of the station. 60 degrees. We've picked up 15 hundredths of an inch so far here at the station, and it continues to rain at a pretty good clip across the downtown area. Uh, here's Lexington getting another little band of some moderate rains pushing on in. Remember, everything is coming from the east and southeast now. So look into parts of Madison County, Clark County for some heavier downpours working on through. That'll work into uh, parts of Woodford County over into the Frankfort area coming up shortly. Moorhead area, eastbound on 64, southeast bound on the Mountain Parkway, across the Howe Rogers Parkway. Everybody getting in on some moderate rains. And I've noticed a little uptick in the overall intensities to the rain over the past 15, 20 minutes or so. Certainly a lot more yellows and oranges on there as everything goes around this big area of low pressure that is to our south and southeast. That's going to continue to funnel the juice in as we go through the rest of the overnight. Coming up in just a few minutes, guys, we'll look into that Saturday and Sunday forecast with a brand new hour by hour outlook. Just a few weeks ago, she was running, jumping, and flipping. A cheerleader beginning her junior year at Estill County High School. Tonight, Jackie Miller has a new mission. 
learn to walk again. As WKYT's Mike Linden tells us in a story that's new at 6, a rare condition has slowed her down, but not stopped her determination. I've had doctors tell me that I wouldn't walk. Early last month, 16-year-old Estill County High School junior Jackie Miller was practicing gymnastics on the first day of school. After a routine flip, she felt an odd pain in her back. It felt like a pinched nerve in my back. Um, it was just kind of like a really tingly pain. Miller says the pain quickly got worse. When her right leg went numb, Jackie's family rushed her to UK Children's Hospital. Then it just went up across my hips, down my left leg, and then it started to work its way up my waist. Doctors diagnosed Miller with surfer's myelopathy, a rare hyperextension of the spinal cord. According to Jackie's doctors, she is the first confirmed case of surfer's myelopathy in a gymnast in the United States. And of the 62 people affected by it, only two have never walked again. To help raise money for a new wheelchair and renovations to the Miller's home to make it more accessible to Jackie, community members are hosting the High Heels and Hot Wheels Cruise car show and auction this Sunday. Those close to her say despite the situation, she's been an inspiration to them all. For someone at 16 to have that kind of heart and that kind of understanding and I have that faith, it, it makes a difference in you. Doctors say it could take up to two years for Jackie to walk again. Her mom says she has no doubt her daughter will succeed. You never let anyone tell you you can't do something. If it's in your heart, do it. You can do it. And she's doing it, and it's inspired me. The fundraiser kicks off this Sunday at Citizens Guarantee Bank on River Drive in Irvine. In Estill County, Mike Linden, WKYT. What a great, brave girl there. Jackie plans to be on the sidelines for the Estill County football game tonight with her fellow cheerleaders. We have a sad update tonight about a lifelong UK fan. I first brought you the story of Scott Logden during our Final Four coverage last April. Logden, who was 45, lost his battle with acute myeloid leukemia last night. In 2013, Logden received a bone marrow transplant from a University of Wisconsin student. Logden was a youth pastor and was a major for the Woodford County Detention Center. He leaves behind a wife and four children. A traffic signal on the new extension of Citation Boulevard will go up this weekend, but not at Greendale Road. Lexington Mayor Jim Gray tweeting today that traffic and engineering will install left turn signals at Leestown and Citation this weekend. The state is also planning to put in a traffic signal at Citation and Greendale. That intersection came under fire shortly after the Citation extension opened on Monday after several crashes and near misses. For now, the Greendale intersection remains a two-way stop with no left turns. It can be an emotional and difficult topic to talk about, and that's why the Fayette County Sheriff's Office is encouraging people to speak up and stand up to domestic violence. The Sheriff's Office held a news conference today to kick off the start of Domestic Violence Awareness Month in October. The mother of a woman who was the victim of domestic violence spoke at the event. Diana Ross's daughter, Amanda, was shot outside her Lexington home in 2009. Her ex fiance and former lawmaker, Steve Nunn, is serving life in prison for killing her. Diana Ross says she wants to make sure other parents are aware of the signs of domestic violence. Nothing that any parent should ever have to experience. It has given me a voice to promote this cause in honor of Amanda and to stop the violence. Fayette County Sheriff Kathy Witt says she also wants to address schools about bullying and dating violence to make sure children are aware of the signs.